This episode of the Demonic Compendium contains spoilers for the following games. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to a thalassophobic new episode of the Demonic Compendium, the show where I discuss the mythology, design, and game history of your favorite Megami Tensei demons. You know what they say, a horse is a horse, of course, of course, but what about when it isn't? So put on your water wings and maybe don't hop on any wild animals you see, because today we're talking about Kelpie. Kelpies are mythological creatures from Celtic mythology, most notably in the regions we now know as Ireland and Scotland. They're described as beautiful supernatural creatures that live around deep lakes and rivers and typically disguise themselves as a horse. A Kelpie will try to lure travelers or children close to it and encourage them to climb upon its back so it can take them for a ride. However, once a traveler climbs onto a Kelpie, their adhesive skin makes it difficult to climb off, and the horse-like monster will drag their victim underwater until they drown, whereupon the Kelpie will feast upon them. A few simple tricks for identifying a Kelpie include paying attention to see if its mane and tail are wet, and perhaps most importantly, checking if it's a talking horse near a lake. Maybe I'm missing something extra here, but I can't help but feel like it'd be really easy to just not climb onto a Kelpie. They don't seem to be like sirens or mermaids where their voice can hypnotize a person, though in some stories Kelpies are shapeshifters who don't always appear as horses. They may appear as a man with hoof hands, a beautiful woman, or even a giant dinosaur if the legend that the Loch Ness Monster is actually a giant Kelpie is to be believed. The few brave souls that climb upon a Kelpie and are able to tame it, either through sheer strength or a magic bridle, will convert the Kelpie into a loyal and powerful steed. Kelpies are an engaging and iconic figure in Scottish folklore, and the largest horse statues in the world depict two Kelpies. These statues were erected in Scotland in 2013. Kelpie's compendium entry from Shin Megami Tensei 5 refers to them as a fairy of Celtic folklore that lives by the water and takes the appearance of a horse. They often drown those who attempt to ride them, but if tamed, they can be valuable mounts. Design-wise, in many of the earliest games, Kelpie's design was simply that of a horse, but the later Kaneko design turned it into a bright green horse with a mane and lower body made of seaweed-like hair. Truthfully, I really like this design, and I think it does a great job of capturing the idea of what a Kelpie is. Like, you know when you're at the beach and seaweed wraps around your leg and you start kicking and flailing like, ah, get it off! Yeah, well, now it's a giant horse that's actively trying to drown you, and frankly, I think it works really well. Kelpie also has a Demikids design, where it resembles a cross between a horse, seahorse, and mermaid, and has the name Mermount. It also works pretty well, but it's not as cool as the seaweed horse. As far as game history goes, Kelpie actually has quite a few roles throughout the franchise and does regularly show up in different series. In Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne, Kelpie has a very small role in the Assembly of Nilo. While the Demi-Fiend is trying to track down Kai Wan, some of the rooms you can wander into will be guarded by a couple of Kelpie and start a brief fight. One of Kelpie's most unique and interesting roles is in Shin Megami Tensei 4. A group of Kelpies offer to help Flynn get across the river if he brings them the head of Pialade. What's most interesting about this is the idea of Kelpies building a bridge actually comes from an 1860s fable from John F. Campbell, roughly translated as, of the bridge of the fairies or Kelpies. And later, a similar fable called the Kelpies Bridge came from Charlotte Dempster in 1888. I always love when Megaten demons get a game role that does distinctly tie into an obscure piece of their mythology like that. And in both SMT4 and Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse, Kelpie will evolve into Valkyrie when leveled up high enough. Kelpie has a few small roles in Shin Megami Tensei 5. For starters, a Kelpie gives the Nahobino the side quest an unusual forecast. Kelpie asks the Nahobino to kill a giant Girimakala and bring the fairy its head so it can use it as a watering can to feed all the plants in Fairy Village. And I'm suddenly having deja vu to another recent episode where someone from Fairy Village asked me to bring them a demon's severed head. Apart from that, Kelpie has a unique conversation with Mermaid if you have her in your party. They have a rather heartfelt conversation about how they feel about drowning people. The Kelpie has a bit more fun with it, while Mermaid seems a bit distressed that it's a side effect of her singing. 
Kelpie tries to cheer her up by informing Mermaid that it's not her fault. Sinker sisters for life! Also, I guess that means Kelpie in SMT5 is a girl. Go figure. In Digital Devil Saga 1, Surf and the Embryon must fight through a wave of Kelpie during their second visit to the Maribel base, where some solids will transform into the horse monsters to try and stop you from progressing. Kelpie also has a much smaller role near the start of Digital Devil Saga 2, where a Karma Soldier transforms into a Kelpie and attacks the Embryon alongside a Bugaboo. Lastly, Kelpie has a small role in Persona 5 Royal, where its shadow self is known as the Mad Marsh Horse. Most notably, Kelpie is one of the Personas used by Lavenza, and actually appears right at the start of the fight to remove any automatic party buffs and cast Heat Riser on Lavenza herself. While Kelpie is absent from Persona 5 Strikers, just watch my luck, it'll have some huge role in Persona 5 Tactica in a few months. And so there you have it, Kelpie, the sneaky, sticky, seaweed-soaked Scottish Stallion. Did I leave out something you thought was important? Was I just plain wrong about something? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to let me know who you'd like to see me talk about in future episodes. That's going to do it for this episode of the Demonic Compendium, and I will see you next time. But be careful while you rest that a demon doesn't take over your body.